This is one of the walls in my office. I needed a set of shelves to keep my books and board games on, and I wanted a set of built-in shelves, but I also wanted it to have a really great theme and have an atmosphere that would help inspire me as I wrote here in the office and was working. So I wanted to have the candles and then also fog effects, and the candles and the fog effects are controlled by remote, so I can be at my office desk and turn them on and off. The top portion there I'm particularly proud of because it's made of reclaimed wood that I got from an old roof. It's a beautiful look. Let's jump in and I will show you how I made it. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take this wall in the office here and I want to build in shelves to hold my board games, my role-playing books, my fiction books, and everything else here in the office. So I've got all the wood to go up here, but I've got to paint this wall because I found out that while well, I've got all this natural, great-looking reclaimed wood, but that it means that it's not going to sit flush up against each other when I put it up here on the wall. So what I've got to do is I've got to paint this wall black so that uh, any kind of gaps, you just see black. Once the wall was painted black, it was time for board prep, and this is always a time-consuming step. I had to sand down all of these planks and then also stain them before being able to install them. I started building from the bottom up, so I started building the base of these shelves, and as you can see, I used the existing baseboard in the room for the height of that base, and I nailed this uh, into the floor. So nothing is easy, especially trying to build board game shelves into a concrete wall here. So what I'm doing is I've got this furring strip here, and I'm putting a hole into the furring strip, and then also drilling with a masonry bit, to make sure you're using a masonry bit, into this wall. And then I'm using these anchors right here. Here's one. That way I can put it through the furring strip, you can see here, and into the wall. It's got a nail that sticks out like that. And then I just use a hammer, and it goes in. Just like that. Kind of hard to hammer and use the uh, camera at the same time. But there we go. So here I am in the corner of the board game shelves. As you can see, drilling out all these holes is a dusty process. And then uh, basically, you can see I'm building a little ledge because then I've got the boards. They're going to go in right on top of it like this that I was staining. And then of course, there's going to have to be a piece over there to support it. But then I'm going to take the nail gun and I'm going to shoot nails down in here and that's going to keep the next uh, shelf up and I'm just going, going to repeat this process all the way up the top. Because I've got these shorter pieces of wood for the shelves, I want to make sure that they're well supported as I move across the wall. So I'm working with these pieces of wood right here and of course all this wood is going to be stained so it matches the shelves but I'm just doing my cutting right here because I want to be able to put the edge of this board on one of these pieces of wood that goes all the way down to the other piece of wood and then also I want to take pieces of wood and do this and then these will get nailed uh, together so this will be one piece right here and that way I can take nails and I can drive them down here as well and it should produce a, a really solid fixture over here on this side for this piece of wood and I'll do the same kind of thing down at the bottom to make sure that it's attached to the bottom as well. And so I just continued to build the shelves up and it was slow and dusty work. Look at all that dust. Be sure to wear a respirator while you're doing this. Here's what's going on in the office. I've been building these board game shelves. I'm not done over there, but I am all the way up to the main height over on this side. So I wanted to get a feel of the rest of the project. So I've been putting up these uh, reclaimed wood panels. They're not attached yet, but I wanted to see how they look. And I think they're gonna look good. This is old reclaimed wood uh, from a friend of mine's roof. And so that's what's going to go from the uh, shelves here all the way up to the reclaimed wood ceiling that I've been putting in all the way across this back wall. It's gonna look really good. I can't wait to get it in. This is an older house, so the walls weren't necessarily plumb, so I had to be sure that my planks were straight up and down with a level as I was going across. And I was just using those anchors to put them in the wall as well. And so I like the look of that because it looks like they're large studs that are keeping them in the wall, which they are. Here's what I was talking about with the walls not being straight. I had this wedge-shaped piece at the end here. So I had to make a template out of some blue masking tape to cut the right shape piece out at the end of the wall. Another way you could have done this that I probably would do in the future if I did it again would be to sheetrock this entire wall first and then use that as a basis to build the shelves on top of. Now I'm starting to clean up and it starts to look really nice once all that dust is out of here. This is also when I put the polyurethane on the lower shelves. I didn't have to do any type of board prep to the planks that are up there at the top and that was very nice. 
I did wash them, but otherwise they are just how they came off the roof of that house, and they've got all those neat nail marks and all of this character to it. Looks great. Now it's time to start building the upper shelves. I looked at a few different existing shelving options, but I didn't find anything that I liked, and I even found that existing mounting hardware was more than I wanted to pay, so I made up these wooden mounting brackets, cut them to shape, sanded them, glued them together, clamped them, and then nailed them, and then stained them. By the way, stain before you glue. I ended up with some glue marks where the stain didn't adhere, but actually you don't really notice in the final product. So I've been staining these boards, so they are close to ready to go. So these are going to go up the, the wall like this. So the upper shelves are going to be recessed a bit, so they're not as deep as these lower shelves are down here. And then I've been making these shelf brackets here, and they're going to go up under here, uh, two or three of them uh, per shelf. So basically, I want to have these ready to go in order to just mount directly to the wall. So the next step is to take some polyurethane. I've got some semi-gloss polyurethane. I'm going to put that over the shelves, and also the brackets. I cut some spacers out of foam to help me space all the shelves correctly and also help hold them while I attach them to the wall. Then the next step was to cut out these wooden braces for the shelves so they got cut, sanded, and then stained, and then installed. I got these three shelves finished and I think they look great. I especially like the brace that I put on them. I think that really adds to the look. Plus, it makes them very, very sturdy. And these shelves are anchored into the concrete wall back here. Moving down here, I've also started hanging up some art. This piece here is called The Bringer of War. It's by Bernard Lee. Uh, I hung out with him uh, and actually stayed in a house with him at DragonCon uh, a couple of years ago. Or was that last year? I can't remember. Uh, and I really loved this piece, and so I got it from him. This is piece, uh, a limited edition print, a print 11 of 50. And then going down the wall even further, I have the other three shelves, let's see, here on the uh, wall hung up as well, and those are anchored into the wall. Now, down here, let me show you, I have put on a facing for the shelves. So I've got the raw wood, let's see, the raw wood that would be here, and of course I had the raw wood up here as well. But what I went and, and did was I went to the hardware store and I bought uh, what they called premium pine, because I wanted something that had a really nice look. And so I bought the premium pine wood pieces, and then I stained it, and then I put polyurethane on it, and then I, I put that as a facing on the shelf. And I think that's a, a really important uh, piece here to add as far as looks goes. I'm doing the same thing down here on all these columns here. I've got the raw wood, but like this, for instance, is a piece of that premium pine, and it's going to be put up here as well. And I think it's going to make the, uh, the whole shelf uh, unit look a lot better. Now I've got these big gaps here to the side of the art, and they need candle sconces. I couldn't find the candle sconces that I had, so I decided to make some instead. I had leftover reclaimed wood, and so I decided to try to make some sconces out of that. So I cut these back boards, but it was important that the sconces were visually distinct from the wood on the wall. They're made of the same wood, so I had to do something. So I sanded them down, and then I put a stain on them in order to darken them. It was a light stain, but because of the interaction with the wood, it sent them dark, but not too dark. And then I put a polyurethane over them as well. So by the time they were sanded, the stain went on, and the polyurethane, they both matched that back wall, but also looked visually distinct and stood out. So here's what the unit looked like when assembled but I decided to do a little bit more for them. I wanted a decoration, and so I themed each sconce according to one of the symbols in Journey to the Tree of Sorrows. I've got the Brand of Cthulhu, the Yellow Sign, the Elder Sign, and the Mark of the Necronomicon, and those are the enamel pins and also the D2 coins that uh, are available through Infinite Black, and I just took some epoxy. I put them up on the candle sconces. It gives them a little bit of something extra and also something for the candle light to reflect off of and bounce off of. Now let's talk about the fog effects. I got this fog machine right here. I got it because it has a remote control, so I can sit at my office desk and I can operate the fog machine without having to get up. That's great. It also has these lights on it. I thought that would be good, but I found out the lights aren't capable of being independently controlled. When the unit is on, the lights are on, and I didn't really like that, so I used tape to cover up the lights. I wanted something cool to be emitting the fog, and so I happened to have this skull sitting around the workshop, so I decided to make the fog come out of it. And I hooked up a fog chiller, because naturally the fog will want to rise, as you saw. So what you have to do is you have to cool the fog, and that way the chilled fog will sink like I want. 
In order to do that, I have this hose that attaches to the fog machine, and I'm running it through this tub here, which is going to be filled with ice. And I just stuffed as much of that hose as I possibly could, drilled out a hole in both sides of the tub, so the hose goes in one side, out the other, and then right into the skull. I sealed all those holes with silicone, and then you fill the tub with ice. I drilled out some holes in the skull, and then you just turn the fog machine on. The colder the fog is, the better the effect. I kind of found that the velocity that the fog machine is shooting fog out into the skull is a bit much. I kind of originally had in my mind a kind of slow drizzle of fog rolling out of the skull, but it comes out a bit faster than that. It's still okay. It gets a lot of fog out in the room and generates some atmosphere. But I think in the future I might work a little bit more with trying to come up with more rolling fog out of the skull. You can also use a bigger fog chiller to get colder fog, which makes it sink faster, but I gotta put this up on a shelf, so I'm kind of limited as to the size of my fog chiller. But let me tell you, it still does look great. I love being in my office at night, turning on all of the candles, turning on the fog machine, and it really generates a cool atmosphere. I love the interplay between the candlelight and the fog. So this is basically it. It has been a seriously fun build and I do love the way that it works. I think it's going to provide a really great atmosphere in here uh, in the office and it's going to be a fantastic place for me to work. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope it inspires you to go build something like this as well. And if it did, please give the video a like and also subscribe. We'll be having some more videos coming out soon. And in the meantime, happy building and happy gaming. I will see you in another video.